what's up? Thanks for coming back through. I was doing this one on the road, actually. I was actually just up in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and we were gonna do this review on the actual road. Uh, but what happened is I couldn't do the road noise and the microphone was not picking up my voice as much as it was the road. So I got this entire review done Went back through it and I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Today we are going to be talking about a shoe that I'm super impressed with. Uh, for more reasons than one. The shoe itself is great. But what I really love about the shoe is that a major brand who typically does not make a shift for the customer. Your Nikes, your Adidas, your Asics. These bigger brands already have our money. So they don't make a shift for the customer at all. Well, this brand listened, and all of the feedback directly impacted the new design language of this particular shoe. So let's just get into it. I ain't got it all tied up pretty. I just slid it off because I'm actually wearing it today. We're talking about the Adidas Addy Zero Boston 12. Yo, this shoe right here is incredible. It's fantastic. I've already had it on for a few miles of jogging and walking. Um, I just picked them up when we were up in Minneapolis, St. Paul, we were actually at a master's track meet. So I was trying to get them before the meet so that I could do a little warm up in them, but couldn't find them. They were over at REI. I went to the wrong REI, blah, 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 long story short. Picked them up the next day as a gift to myself for doing so well at the meet, you know. I really wanted to get this review out as soon as possible um, because I, had the previous model like so many people. The 10 and 11 was a huge disappointment for a shoe that for Adidas has been a staple. I mean, it's named after the Boston Marathon. The Adidas Boston has gone through a lot of iterations with a lot of different technologies, but it's a legacy name. Not unlike the Pegasus, not unlike Keanu. So you wanna make sure that no matter how many iterations of a particular shoe you do, you're coming with the real deal for the customer, for the legacy of that shoe. And to be quite honest, the Boston fell flat, literally. Like the shoe felt like styrofoam, but there's a lot of good stuff going on. So let's get into it. Adidas Boston 12. As we always do, upper, midsole, outsole. Now, the crazy thing about this shoe is the previous model had a lot of overlays, and if you haven't been an Adidas fan for a long time, you didn't know where those were coming from. Well, that goes all the way back to a lot of the Addy Zero days. It goes all the way back to a lot of the Adistar days. We're talking uh, early to mid 2000s. A lot of that design language they were bringing back in retro, but a lot of people didn't realize that it was retro. This go around, they went with a mesh. It's an engineered mesh very, very open, very breathable. A few spots where the mesh tightens up to give some support. This uh, fused overlay mud guard on the toe. There is no heel counter. It's mainly made from that fused strapping on the back. Goes up and around the heel, right around the Achilles. This uh, sort of flip up pull tab on the heel. It's convenient, makes a lot of sense, it's functional but there is no hard heel counter until you get right down here to the bottom. Now on the bottom of that shoe, there is a very slight heel cup. And, and that's what I would call it. It's much more like a cup than it is a heel counter. You got what actually looks to be a light strike insole. It's much softer than your typical foam. Um, very, very comfortable actually. Uh, normally I, I rip those out immediately and put my own in, but this one has survived for a little bit longer. There is a very, slim, almost kind of suede felt tongue. And it's very, very comfortable against the top of your foot. Um, however, it will slide just a bit because it is not gusseted along with that ghillie lacing system. So with the ghillie system, I don't think they could have gusseted the tongue. They would have had to find a way to attach it somehow to the upper portion of the upper, uh, right where your foot slides in. Uh, typically on shoes that aren't gusseted, I can sew it down, but the fused eye stays uh, on this particular shoe don't allow for that. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. Uh, you will get a little bit of tongue slippage and sliding off to the side. Um, 
not really sure how to stop that. It probably depends on your foot shape. I've heard some reports that some people didn't like the lacing. Um, I don't know where that's coming from. I love the snug fit. You've got to somewhat be a fan of Gilly lacing systems. Gilly lacing is the kind of lacing that actually loops up and around and has a sort of basket effect on the inside. So when you're pulling on it, it's pulling a layer on the inside as well as the top layer of the actual upper. I love it. I love the snug fit. Um, Adidas hasn't done a lot with ghillie lacing. I think in years past, Nike has done a lot more with ghillie lacing, uh, and I'm a big fan of it. So this helps the fit tremendously. They were also talking a little bit about heel slippage, which I can actually understand on this. Because there's no heel counter, the only snug padding for your foot on the side of the shoe is right here. These two little foam pads that sit just below your ankle bone. And they kind of hug the side of your foot. Now that's not a traditional heel counter. Um, although I will say, I don't have the same problem with heel slippage that some people have. Mainly because I'm a sprinter jumper. What I need is midfoot lockdown. I don't mind if my heel slides a little bit because I'm not really tucked into the back of my heel anyway. Um, I'm landing midfoot to forefoot. So a sprinter jumper's foot is already floating somewhat. And as long as we can push off and our toes are secure and our arch and midfoot are secure, then we're a lot better off. Now, that does not negate the complaint that it does slip. Now, I developed a blister at the meet and it wasn't very comfortable at all. And the only thing that saved me was the fact that my heel did slip a little bit. It was not snugged up against the back of the shoe. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but it was certainly good for me at the time. So just being honest with you, that's something that you're going to have to contend with. Um, you can get locked down. You can do the runner's knot right there with that second lace hole if you want at the top. Um, I didn't feel a need. I locked down pretty well. Again, my midfoot was secure, so I was fine. Okay, let's go to midsole. It's the most obvious thing. Um, first off, it's beautiful. I love the new design language that Adidas has started to use. It's a tremendous, tremendous look. Again, they like to uh, lend themselves back to older, uh, older models. I love that they go into their archive a little. They're, they're subtle about it. I wish that they were a little more overt. But like something like this goes back to late 90s. Adidas, very angular, your twin strikes, your A-cube stuff, the early A-cube, not the bounce, I hate that stuff. Um, you know, you're looking at your Oberons, some of the fashion, uh, the fashion inspired athletic stuff. Uh, that was really good and that's what this looks like. They brought a little bit of that back. We'll start from the bottom up on the Mizzo. So the lighter foam is now light strike 2.0 so much better it compresses it's soft it's not as soft as light strike pro but light strike 2.0 actually does have a much better compression a much better feel that saves the shoe completely i've got other shoes that are all light strike pro and they're soft and they're bouncy and they're good they don't work for me we talked about how that softness can often make your foot overwork. The combination of that soft landing with the Light Strike Pro, but this equally cushioned Light Strike 2.0 helps a ton. That changes everything about the shoe. Um, that first one again, even the sound of it, you could hear somebody coming a mile away if they were using that Boston 10 or Boston 11. This changes the game completely from the moment you slip your foot in this shoe. It is a tremendous feel. Love it. Now, we go up to the Light Strike Pro. The Light Strike Pro is incredible. It's in the same configuration as it were before, of course, the new design cues, but at the ball of that foot and right where those, uh, those energy rods intersect, you can actually see the two different kinds of foam there. 
working with each other. At that point, you need exactly that. You need the ball of the foot to be more cushioned than the heel. Now, the funny thing, ironically, I was just talking about this a few reviews ago, reviewing shoes that had all of the softness here in the heel and none in the forefoot where you actually need it, at least for a sprinter and a jumper. A lot of us who are toe strikers or midfoot strikers absolutely need more cushioning at the ball of our feet. And a lot of shoes put the big chunk of super foam somewhere near the heel. This changes the game. The energy rods are obviously trapped inside. These are a softer version of the energy rod. They are not carbon fiber, they are fiberglass, or as our Euro friends would call them, glass fiber. Still with structure, still with roll technology, still matching the metatarsals of your foot, but giving you a ton of flexibility with that also. So there's a lot of snap as they snap back into place, as that energy rod pops back into place and back to form is giving you a super boost of energy. I really, really love this new configuration with these new materials. It's incredible. Let's talk about the outsole. I mean, what can you say? It's continental rubber. It's fantastic. It does not fail. It's actually somewhat squeaky when you first put it on. So if you're walking on any kind of hard floors, don't sneak up on anybody. Squeak, 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 grip, grip, grip. It's the perfect stuff. So whatever you're doing with Continental Adidas, keep doing it. This stuff is sticky. I was wearing it this weekend a little bit on wet surfaces. Lost not a step. The way that Adidas has listened to the complaints, and the complaints were loud. You know, I can't see that the Boston 10 or 11 sold well. They went on sale quite early. Um, and I mean, I don't want to see anybody fail. These, these brands make their money. That's cool. But I don't want to see anything fail because we're the ones that the failure is going to land on at the consumer level. So this update has gone a long way to, uh, to satisfy a lot of customer complaint. And I really, really think that uh, it's going to go good. I think that it's worth a shot and at the price point we're looking at 160 uh, most places i don't know that this was going to go on sale very quickly because there's going to be a lot of good reviews about this one so 160 being the price point well worth the money and we're talking price versus value so the price of a shoe versus what you get from the shoe i can't say that a super shoe is high value because i'm going to pay over 200 dollars for a shoe that i'm not going to use for the majority of the time I own it. I'm gonna use it to race. I might use it for a really fast session or something like that. This is a shoe that I'm gonna walk around in. I'm gonna train in it. I'm traveling soon again, and I'm gonna take one pair of these with me for both fashion and function because they do look good. The value for a shoe like this is super duper high. And so the price is what you pay, but the value being what you get I am way up on, on purchasing this shoe. Gotta love it. All right, so that is the Addy Zero Boston 12. It's the shoe so nice that I bought it twice. Ah, I had this model coming from Adidas already. I saw that they had a different color up in the city, so I bought this one, knowing that this one was on the way. Ah, what can I say when it's good, it's good. Thanks for coming through, peace.